welcome back. Thank you so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. I'm gonna be taking a quick momentary pause on the garage videos for the piping videos. We'll be back on that next. But for today's video, I wanna show you guys how to mount different types of commercial boxes. All right, so before we start on the commercial work, we're gonna to have to take down all the residential work and start with a clean slate. But before we do that, I wanna thank today's video sponsor, which is once again, Field Pulse. Thank you so much, Field Pulse, for sponsoring this video, but more on that later. Let's go ahead and jump right in and clean the slate. All right, so once you go ahead and get that done and cleaned up, we are ready to go for some new boxes. So I'm gonna show you guys the different types of boxes that I have. All right, so this is one of the normal types of residential boxes. They usually come with nails coming through the side, but this is a face nailer. So those are mainly the two different types of um, residential boxes that you'll encounter. So these are two different types of bracket boxes for commercial that you would normally screw onto a wall. This is the inch and a half version, and this is the two and an eighth version. Most people like to use the deeper boxes for more box fill, uh, for more area to put all their devices, extra wire, makes it less crowded, all that good stuff. Um, so these are the different types that you would screw onto a wall. This is that same type of box without the brackets. This is just called a four square box. And this is the two and an eighth deep version. All right, so next up is the pancake box. This is a three inch version. This is the four inch version. And these are normally used for dining room lights or vanity lights. And these are for when you have to mount a box right where a stud is at. So this is for precise measurements for like dining room lights or vanity lights where you have to get this in a certain spot, but there might be a stud in the way or something like that. So you have your screw holes in the back and then obviously your holes for putting your wire through and stuff like that. So these are for those scenarios. And lastly, I'm gonna show you guys is just a normal octagon box. This one has some clamps on the inside, but these are normally used for lighting boxes and stuff like that. Um, and I will show you guys how to mount some of these. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so if you guys wanna mount these boxes at a certain height, go ahead and mark your measurements. These are probably about, uh, I'd say about 43 inches off the ground roughly. Um, but if you guys wanna get these perfect, you're obviously gonna to wanna to use a laser or something like that, but that's for another type of video. Um, so anyways, I have some marks here where I want to mount my boxes for my four square boxes. Um, so I got one mark here and one mark here. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring you guys in closer and show you guys how that process works for mounting a four square bracket box. All right, so starting out, I have some inch and a half screws and then also I have my Milwaukee Impact drill. All right, so if you look at our mark right here, this is gonna be the top of our box, but depending on what you're doing, you might have to do something different. So this is gonna be the top of our box right here, but keep in mind um, of something that you might experience out in the field that you might be mounting the boxes to the top of the mark or to the screw holes on the mud rings and stuff like that. But for now, let's just go ahead and line this up with our mark right here. And then you're gonna line up the edge of this bracket box right here to the edge of the stud. And that is gonna make sure that the box is flush with the edge of the stud. And you're gonna just gonna go ahead and line that up and then go ahead and screw that in. So as you can see, this one moved back a little bit, but that's okay, we'll fix that. Um, so that'll be a nice placeholder right there. Uh, we can go ahead and make sure our box is still lined up and bring out the top bracket and line that one up and then move the second one after that. If you don't get in the center of the screw hole, it is gonna push your box to the left or to the right, depending on which direction your screw is going. So you're gonna want it to be as center as possible. So once again, just kind of grab your box and then screw it in the center of the hole. So now that I got this screw mounted, I'm gonna go ahead and take out the bottom one and then adjust that and fix it. Mean. So once you go ahead and get two screws in to hold it, I like to do four screws just to make sure it's super solid. If you're doing commercial work, you're mostly gonna be not running into wood studs, you're gonna be running into steel studs or metal studs. And for those, you're just gonna be using these little tiny screws to screw through the metal. These are called the bumblebees right here. That's what I've heard them called. Um, the little pointer tech screws, half inch pointer screws, no self tap. Those are called the bumblebees. And then we also have the same screw with the self tapping on it to make it easier to start and drill through the steel studs or metal studs. Um, and those are just called the self tapping tech screws. There's so many different names for everything, but those are just a couple of them. 
So this is what you would be normally using if you were screwing into metal studs. But for now, all I got is wood studs because I'm just doing videos in my garage. All right, so now that I got my four screws in, she is never moving. All right, so that is one example for doing the four square bracket box. It's gonna be the same exact process for the deep box. Once again, you're just gonna go ahead and line that up flush with the wall, and that is gonna be that. Put your screws in and you will be ready to go. All right, so for these next boxes, I'm gonna show you guys how to mount these. Some of these you can screw right to the stud if you wanted just to put this directly to the wall right there. You could do that. It's not gonna be the most sturdy because it's kind of gonna wobble a little bit. Um, but for something like this, you're probably not gonna be mounting it to directly to the stud. So there is a different way to mount these type of boxes and that is gonna be with a spreader bar. All right, so these are spreader bars and this is what is gonna be holding up your box. If you have a longer scenario, you're gonna to wanna to use the bigger ones. If you have a shorter scenario, obviously you're gonna to wanna to use the shorter ones. So these short ones probably are barely gonna make it. So I'm gonna use the bigger one as I'm gonna be going from this stud to this stud, AKA spreading it apart, spreader bar, you get it. Okay, so we're gonna be using this spreader bar right here. And so to use this, all you're gonna do is fold these apart and then you have your two separate spreader bars. And then all you have to do is put that together in the middle, slide it down, and just be careful not to pinch yourself or anything like that. What I like to do is just fold these tabs over like this, then kind of hit it against the wall, hit it against your hand, something like that. And then once you kind of break free, then you are good to slide this to any different length that you want. Um, the easiest way for me personally, put this, put your box against the spreader bar and then just fold over your depth right there and you're gonna get the perfect depth every time. All right, so for this box, I'm probably gonna be doing like another vanity light. So I'm gonna do this one up here. You're gonna to want to measure off of the ground or off of the ceiling to get your marks at the same exact height. So for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and measure this one with a tape measure and match it off of the ground. It is gonna be a lot easier to make your marks a little bit longer, just like this. Because when you go ahead and put your bar on right there, it is gonna take up a lot of that. So you're still gonna to wanna to be able to see it if you have to have an inch hanging over or something like that. If I was doing a shallower box, this might even need a little bit more just because like I said, it can be an inch or something like that. So it does not hurt to have a little bit extra just like that. So once again, spreader bars are for getting certain type of measurements. So if I needed to mount a box right in between these two studs right here, right there, I'm gonna to need to have this spreader bar to be able to hold my box in that position that I need it. So that's why the spreader bar is so important and so useful. Once again, we're gonna be doing this in obviously the wood studs, but for the most part, you're probably gonna be running into a scenario with steel studs. So you would just be using your little baby bumblebee screws or your self-tapping screws. But since I'm going into wood, I'm just gonna be using my wood screws. And then all you're gonna do is just line up the centers right here. One thing that is nice to remember is there are sheet rockers that are becoming behind you, so you are gonna to want to use screws that are flat as possible. These ones might not be the best, but if you're going into wood, uh, this might be your only option. But for metal studs, you are gonna be using the flatter pan head tech screws, so those will be perfect for the sheet rockers, won't get in their way, anything like that. As you can see, I got these ones pretty flush. The more that you screw them in, the deeper they will go and flusher that they will be. These can tend to be a little bit flimsy, especially with the metal studs. So sometimes it is nice to throw screws into the backside of the studs. So just to make sure that this does not move around at all. Sometimes I like to throw one screw on the top and the bottom of each side. So two screws and two screws. That is a lot of screws. Another option you can do is throw a screw right through the spreader bar and line up these holes. So your bar is not gonna be sliding to the left or to the right. But once you mount your box, that's usually not gonna be a problem anyways. All right, so before we go on to our last step with the spreader bar and mounting the box, I want to thank today's video sponsor, which is Field Pulse. Field Pulse is a software company that helps digitalize things like your work orders, your material list, and also your hours worked. If you guys own your own company or think that the company that you work for could benefit from using the software, make sure to check them out down below by clicking the link in the description. Anyways, let's go ahead and jump back into the next step on mounting our box. All right, so for the next step, let's just say we want to put this box at nine inches. So we're gonna go ahead and mark our nine inches right there off of the wall. And that is going to be our center mark. And like I said, if you guys wanted this box at 50 inches, 
50 inches is right here. If you go ahead and mount your box, then it's going to be two inches higher. So always account for the center mark um, as this is the center of the box and not the top of the box. So if you want the top of your box at 50, you're gonna to need to move your mark down two inches to 48. Anyways, let's go ahead and mount this on our nine inch mark. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to use the Bumblebee pointy screws and also the self-tapping tech screws. Anyways, mounting these boxes with tech screws is gonna be a lot easier if you have a magnetized tip on your drill. Mine, I just realized is not, so it's gonna be a little bit harder. Anyways, go ahead and line up the center of your box. Kind of just kind of look through the center holes right here. You can kind of see your mark and then just raise it up to the center. And then you can find your screw holes that line up. It's gonna be a lot easier if you line up your spreader bar holes before you start. Um, but anyways, that pointer screw went right through, no problem. And the pointy screws are gonna be better than the self-tapping screws because once you use the self-tapping screws, they kind of make the hole a little bit wobbly and then the box kind of moves around. As you can see it right here with just one screw, the box is pretty tight just with the pointy screw. So if you go ahead and use your pointy screws on the metal studs for things like your spreader bars, it's gonna make it a lot easier and there's gonna be less wiggle and it's just gonna be a tighter fit and make things a lot easier for you. Once you've used both the self-tapping screws and the pointy screws, you're definitely gonna be able to tell a difference between the two. Um, it really just depends on what your company buys and stuff like that. But I would highly recommend just using the pointy screws um, because they're just gonna be so much better. All right, so now I have three screws in there. Sometimes you'll have four holes in your box. Depending on how the box is manufactured, there is gonna be uh, different screw holes when you turn the box left or right. So right now I have three screw holes on this direction. If I was to turn my box, I would only have two screw holes. So I always like to have the box lined up with the spreader bar with the most screw holes going from left to right. As you can see, I use all of my screw holes right there. All right, so next I'm gonna show you guys how to do the pancake box. So if this is the center of where our box needs to be mounted, uh, let's say this is for vanity light, your studs are right in the way. So you can go ahead and put this right on the center of it. You have some screw holes, different options for screw holes to screw into. And then you're gonna have your uh, holes for your wires on the right side right there. So you'll have some room on the right side to go ahead and put your wire in. So let me show you guys how to do that. It's gonna be a little bit easier with a bigger box. So you could do something like that and then um, you'll have some options here with some knockouts like that. You can kind of slightly tilt your box. As long as it's still centered, you can slightly tilt it so you have more options so it's not partway covered by the stud and stuff like that. So there are some great practical uses for these boxes in certain types of scenarios, but they're not always what you're gonna need. All right, so once again, here is the center right there of where your box needs to go. Line that up with the center of the knockout. That's gonna be the center of your box right here. So once you line that up, um, go ahead and pick the spots where your holes are still gonna be accessible. So I'm gonna pick some right here. And usually you're just gonna have one wire in these because there's no room for slices. It's just gonna be a one wire type of deal. So go ahead and line that up centered and then you can go ahead and pick your screw holes. All right, so there's not much to the pancake boxes, just center on your mark and then go ahead and screw it in, but make sure once again that your wire holes are accessible to put your wire through. And that's pretty much all that there is to know about those guys. All right guys, that's gonna wrap up today's video. Thank you so much for watching, I appreciate it. Hopefully you guys learned how to mount a few different types of boxes, learn some information, some tips and tricks on that. Once again, thank you Field Pulse for sponsoring today's video. I truly appreciate it. If you haven't already, make sure to check them out down below in the description and support them as they support us. We'll see you guys in the next one. God bless, have an awesome rest of your day. Peace.